Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar titled Drive Warehousing Efficiency with Buzix Hands-Free Vision Picking. My name is Mike Hallett. I'm the events manager here at Buzix. And the format for today's call will consist of an opening presentation from Brian Callis, our director of sales. He will then walk you through our warehousing demonstration that we put together for you. And then we'll open it up for a question and answer session at the end. Feel free to type any questions in the remarks section. We'll be happy to answer those for you um, as they come up and at the end. Today's call is being recorded. So if you'd like to view it later, it'll be available on our website. And with that, I'd like to introduce Brian Callis, Director of Sales for Vuzix Corporation. Thanks, Mike. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Vuzix webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about how to drive warehouse efficiency using Vuzix hands-free vision picking. We're going to do a quick presentation for those who aren't familiar with Vuzix, just a quick company overview. We'll touch on the products and our product line and our technologies. And then we'd like to show you a demonstration of our smart glasses actually being used in a warehouse setting for vision picking. So with that, this is Vuzix. Um, we are located here in Rochester, New York, which is between Syracuse and Buffalo for those who don't know the area. Um, we are happy to say that all of our products are designed, developed and manufactured right here in Rochester, New York. So made in the US of A. Uh, we've been at this for over 25 years, um, working on near to eye displays, wearable technologies um, across a number of different industries. Um, and Vuzix smart glasses, they provide the perfect balance, um, both comfort and performance in a number of different use cases, number of different markets, and we'll touch on those in a little bit. So our product lineup of smart glasses, uh, today we're going to focus on the M series of smart glasses, particularly the M400, but we also offer the Vuzix Blade 2. Um, we're now on the third generation or actually the second generation of the blade, as well as the new Vuzix Shield. With the M400, uh, this is the, the product that is built for all day wear a um, number of different mounting options, battery options, again, to fit a number of different use cases and markets. Uh, it is the, the perfect for teams to improve productivity, improve efficiency, reduce errors, a uh, number of different use cases, including remote support, training, uh, remote auditing. And today we're going to show you an example of warehousing or logistics. So the difference between the M400 and the M4000, it really is the display technology. And on the right side is an example that shows the OLED display from the M400. Um, it is an occluded display, but the contrast, the color, the resolution is great. It looks like a seven inch mobile device held at about arm's length away. Um, whereas the M4000 is a see-through display. So you can see the text, you can see the images, um, on the piece of glass, on the lens or the waveguide, um, and it looks like it's floating out in space. So when there's no information being displayed in the waveguide, it looks like just a clear piece of glass and it reduces obstructions to the user's field of view. So the M400 is ruggedized. It is IP67 for dust and water. Um, it is our lightweight product, uh, uses the XR1 processor from Qualcomm, um, and it has been for a couple of years now, the choice to be used and deployed in warehouses. Um, and we'll give you an example of that shortly. The great thing about the M series, the 400 and the 4000 is that it, it is extremely versatile. Uh, we'll touch on the different mounting options um, for each of the different industries, different battery options for short sessions, long sessions, all day sessions, um, and honestly for indefinite sessions. There's a small internal battery in the M400 that allows for true hot swapping of the external battery. So as long as you have a spare battery that's charged up, you can disconnect the, the spent battery, plug in a new one, continue to work. Don't have to log out, don't have to shut down. You don't have to put the M400 in a charging station. Just swap the batteries and you continue working. Um, you can see the M400 has a number of different interaction methods from the buttons up on top, very simple, forward, back, select. Uh, there's a very uh, responsive touchpad on the side as well um, that recognizes swipes and gestures and taps. Um, particularly in a lot of the use cases, we highly recommend voice interaction. 
Um, the M400 has multiple microphones for noise canceling, as well as voice input, voice recognition. It also has integrated speakers for um, sound feedback. So here are some of the mounting options, everything from a lightweight lensless frames that works very well with existing prescription glasses, hard hats, safety glasses, baseball caps. Um, the headband is extremely comfortable for all day use, uh, particularly what is being used now in most warehouse settings. The nice thing about the M series, again, the 400 and the 4000 can be worn right eye or left eye, which is important for those who are left eye dominant. And then we touched on the batteries. Uh, the lightweight battery, the two hour runtime, IP67 for dust and water. There's an extended runtime that gets about eight hours. Um, it's still lightweight. It's still small enough that it can be worn on the head for all day use. And then if you need extended time beyond eight hours, we have belt packs and other battery options for extended run times. So some of the applications that the M400, the M4000 can be used for, we touched on remote support, telemedicine, manufacturing with work instructions, step-by-step -step guidance, um, even security. But today we're gonna to be focusing on the warehousing, the logistics. The M400 and 4000 have a forward-facing camera. They can stream 4K video at 30 frames per second. They can also scan barcodes and QR codes very accurately. The M400 also is Bluetooth enabled, so you can pair the device with a ring scanner or a hand scanner if you need quicker scanning, more accurate scanning, um, or you're scanning items that are either up high on a shelf or down low, um, the Bluetooth scanner, is, it's a very simple and expensive, and it shows all of the information in the display of the M400 or 4000. Um, so even though we're gonna show picking today in the warehouses, you can also do remote support. So if you've got equipment in the warehouse, it needs to be troubleshot, rather than waiting for the vendor to send an engineer, you can put on the glasses, forward-facing camera, stream the video back to the vendor. Their engineers can help you troubleshoot, reduces downtime, reduces travel costs. Um, so just another use case for the same hardware platform um, within the warehouse settings. So what I'd like to show you right now, if we can get this to work, we're gonna show you a video um, of a picking example. And this was done right here in our own warehouse. And I'm gonna pause it a few times just to talk through what you're seeing. So this is our warehouse manager. We're gonna call him Scott. Scott is wearing the Vuzix M400 on a headband. He's got the battery mounted on the left side. You'll see it in a second when he turns. The M400 is mounted just under his right eye. So Scott's gonna to get to the first location and what he's going to do. What you're seeing down at the bottom um, is his, um, it's the display and it's going to be cut off. I'll play it in a second. But what you're seeing in the bottom left-hand corner is exactly what Scott's seeing in the display of the M400. So the, the process is he opens up his tasks with a single tap or a voice and it will download his pick list. Now this is important. I'm going to pause it here. Once you have the pick list, you can either, um, if the Wi-Fi connectivity in the warehouse is great, you can have live streaming, push and pull information to and from the network in real time. If the Wi-Fi connectivity is not great, you can actually download the pick list, store it on the glasses. There's 64 gig of storage on the M400. You can store that um, on board locally on the glasses, and you can have your pick list that you interact with locally and then once you get a Wi-Fi connection, it will push and pull the updates periodically. So it doesn't need a Wi-Fi connection. So I'm gonna let it play, but what you're gonna see here is the pick order. You've got the first item, you've got the part number, the description, um, what it is. And then down at the very bottom, once I hit play, you'll be able to see it's picking one of two. So you see the quantity as well. And then over on the far left, you see the location, the bin E24 and then you tap it to scan and you scan your first item. So again, let me stop it here. We built this in. So we're showing you that with the M400, with this platform, the vision picking solution, you can actually receive feedback that you've picked or you've scanned the wrong item. 
which is critical. So now you're improving accuracy while improving efficiency. So Scott receives this notification, he's got the wrong item. So he's got to go back and then scan the correct item. So you'll see the camera view again, so that Scott knows he's lined up on the right QR code. And there we have the information again, he's picking one of two of the batteries. And again, he's using tap, but what he can do is also use voice to confirm. Say voice, he can, he can pick one, pick two, um, confirm one. So a lot of voice interaction is great. Should you have a noisy environment, um, you've got the ring scanners that work, but you also have the tap on the side of the glasses as a backup. Um, once I hit play again, you're also going to see a visual representation of a palette that Scott is building with these products. Based on color, based on size and orientation, Scott knows exactly where to put that next item. And that's a nice tight palette, not a lot of space, it's stable, and he's going to go back and confirm, and then another tap, or again, confirm or pick will initiate the next pick and scan, confirms the items. Now, if you see, if I can get my play bar out of the way, this is a different color. So now it's designating something different, um, whether it's a different orientation or a different place on the palette. What this is actually designating is that this is going in the same location, but on the next level or the next layer. So he's gonna grab the, pa the package. He's gonna look at the palette. He's gonna line it up. And he realizes he just put it in the same location, but now he's building one layer up. So then he goes back to scan his next item. He gets the confirmation that it's correct. It's only a single item. And you can see when I, my play bar is out of the way, down at the very bottom, it tells them what the task is and how to interact with the glasses. You'll actually see the tap. You'll actually see to end the task, tap. We could, this could be, um, in quotes for a, for a voice command or a button push, whatever it might be. So the interface, the software walks the pickers through exactly what they need to do, what action initiates that, that next step and what that next step is. So once I hit play here, you'll see we've got another orange box in that final corner. It's a very specific orientation of that. Again, confirming you've got the right item, the right quantity. And the last pick is going to drop it right into that open space. And that is a nice tight palette. Task is complete. And again, all of this information is, can either be stored on, locally on the glasses or push and pulled in real time on the network. So we're going to box it up, scan the, the shipping label. And again, you get confirmation right on the glasses. This is where it's supposed to go, where it's supposed to arrive. Okay, so we, we showed a quick demonstration and this, um, we have deployed these glasses to a number of different warehouses and locations and these picks are anywhere from 10 items to 100 items and the pickers just go through these very quickly. What we're seeing is replacing voice picking where the location, the bin location or the item number is fed into a headset and the user has to remember anywhere from a seven to 10 or even 20 digit code that tells them what the item is, where it is in the warehouse, how many they need to pick. So traversing from one location to the next, you've got noise, you've got friends you're talking to, you've got forklifts you need to avoid. So you might forget what that item is or how many you had to pick. So you're constantly hearing the pickers say again, repeat, last item. Whereas with the vision picking, all of that information is in front of their eye at all times, or not front, but available to them, viewing at all times. They don't have to think about how many did I have to pick because it's right on the glasses, right on the display. So some of the benefits to the companies that are starting to deploy these smart glasses, again, we talked about productivity increases, reduction in errors, uh, but you're also improving the worker safety, right? So now they're heads up, they're hands free. Um, they're able to pick and see all of the information around them so they can perform their tasks. Having the information um, at their fingertips when they need it. Um, and then we talked about the palette, right? Nice, tight palette. 
Um, there's no space. It's nice and stable. You don't have that product loss if a pallet tips over in the truck or when it arrives at the store. Uh, but a nice tight pallet also allows you to put more product or more pallets on a single truck. So now you've reduced the number of trucks on the road. You've improved the number of trips or reduced the number of trips to the stores. So overall, we're lowering carbon footprint, which is important. Um, we want to keep the workers healthy as well, right? Lightweight glasses. We're not worried about eye fatigue. We're not worried about stress with the M400. Uh, the different mounting options make sure that they're comfortable. So we want them to have the tools that they need to perform their tasks. We want to be able to let them wear it as well. And then the pickers themselves, um, they're telling us the glasses are extremely comfortable. Once you have the hat, the headband, whatever it might be, uh, they forget that the glasses are there. Um, and the, the, the battery options as well, you can go all day without having to stop and swap out a battery, or if you need to, you swap at your lunch break. Uh, they're lightweight, they're easy to use, right eye, left eye, a uh, number of different features of the Vuzix devices uh, make this the perfect solution inside of a warehouse. So with that, what we'd like to do is, if there's any questions, um, I will be happy to answer anything from the audience. Yeah, Brian, we do have uh, a few questions that have come in. So the first one is, how do I know what software I'll need? Great question. So Vuzix is the hardware provider, and we have a large network of software partners that provide the user interface that is shown on the glasses. Um, it can be custom made for your specific use case. You can have an out of the box solution where it shows very similar information to what we showed in the demonstration, uh, item number, location, um, the, the quantity that you need to pick and what you need to do with it. Uh, the software also varies in the different interaction methods from a, a paired ring scanner or hand scanner, uh, voice interaction, tap and touch on the glasses. So a number of different variations from all of our software partners. So what we'll do is we'll work with you to understand your particular situation, your environment, what you're trying to solve within the warehouse. And then we'll bring in one or more of our software partners and we'll do a deep dive into your process. And then what's the best solution, both hardware and software? And that becomes one bundled solution. Um, so, and our software partners are going to work with you on that back end integration. We know that there are no standardized backend ERPs or WMSs, warehouse management systems. So each one is a, a custom solution and they have to sit down and work with you and your teams and understand what information needs to be pushed and pulled to and from the glasses, to and from the backend system. Um, so Fusix will take that first step. We wanna learn what your problems are and then we'll start to pull in some of our software partners. A uh, question that came in, um, are there any photo capabilities for a receipt inspection on damaged goods? Yeah, 100%. So the forward facing camera on the glasses can be used not only to scan barcodes and QR codes, but it can capture videos. It can capture still pictures. Um, so part of the user interface would be on a receiving process. The first thing that would open up is the camera and you're taking a physical photo um, of that label um, or physical damage to the product. And then that gets stored as part of this record that is stored up on the network. And then at any time you can go back and review that for quality control or assurance or traceability. Um, so that all becomes part of the process or the user interface um, is how to use that camera within which steps or within that process. Um, and you can set up multi steps within that process. So I take a picture, I document the damage. Now I can use my voice to record or dictate what the damage is. And then it will, where is it supposed to go? And then I continue on in the process and it walks the user through. So they really don't have to think or pick and choose what to do next. The software walks them through it. It's all displayed on the, on the glasses, the information, and then they proceed. The next question, is it possible to integrate your device with an external WMS that manages picking lists? Example, yes. Yeah, I talked Microsoft. about it and it, it yep. really is, like I said, there really is not a standard WMS. So it's a warehouse management system. 
Um, it is the software platform that dictates what information is displayed when the UPC or, or barcode or QR code is scanned, what's displayed on the glasses, and what information is pushed back to the network and what information is pulled from that network. So it, it could be as easy as uh, dragging and dropping or aligning the different fields um, so that the information is correct, or it could be something that's as complex as rewriting the entire code to make sure that the right information is getting to and from the glasses properly. So a large part of these deployments is that backend integration. Um, and again, we work closely with you and your IT teams, your security teams, making sure that not only the right information, but that information is secure. Another question, um, this person noticed there was only one QR code on the shelf of similar items. Is this a requirement? No, not at all. We, we just did it for the demonstration purposes to make it simple. Um, but all of those boxes would typically have barcodes or QR codes on it. Um, and again, the glasses, the, the software will allow the glasses to scan multiple barcodes at once and take action on that to find the correct barcode or correct item, or the glasses can be used to scan individual barcodes at a time. Um, if the items are smaller, closer together, the bins are smaller, and you've got a lot of small, tiny barcodes or QR codes, this is where we might recommend a, a, a ring scanner be used for more accurate scanning. And some of these ring scanners are long range, short range, medium range. Uh, they have a visual target or a reticle that shows you which item or which barcode you're on before you pull that trigger to scan it. Uh, the Vuzix glasses, we try to keep it simple. It's going to initiate the camera to scan. And once it finds that first barcode or QR code, it's going to scan it very quickly. And are the uh, screens configurable? The screens, I'm assuming this, the information that's displayed on the screen or on the display, they are absolutely configurable. And that's where our software partners would work with you to understand what information is important to the pickers at that particular step. Um, we don't need to tell the picker that they're delivering this pallet to store number one, two, three, four. The picker needs to know right then and there Where's the location? What's the item number? We can even put a visual representation of the product if you're picking products that aren't in nice square brown boxes. Uh, a visual representation, how many to pick. A lot of these warehouses, they have multiple pallets or bins that these pickers are picking products and putting them into. You can designate which bin, forward, backward, order number eight, seven, whatever it might be. So absolutely that interface that user display is 100% configurable. Uh, but there are also out of the box solutions that might be perfect for a smaller warehouse that may not have a lot of items. So it would vary. Uh, next question, do you have specialists who can answer technical questions for our team? Um, yes, and it's not myself. So I know just enough to be dangerous, but we absolutely do. We have hardware specialists. We have IT and security specialists. We have software specialists in our partners who are going to understand your problem. We're not just gonna show up at your warehouse and dictate what you should be doing. We wanna learn your process. We wanna understand where we can improve efficiencies, reduce errors. And then based on that, we're going to dictate um, the correct hardware solution, the right battery, the right mount. And then on the software side, same thing. What information needs to be displayed that's going to help these pickers get through those pick lists quicker, more accurate? Um, so yes, we, we provide that hardware software expertise that is going to integrate into your existing system. Next question, who are the primary software partners that Vuzix has for warehouse picking? So we do have a number of them. They're up available on our website. I really don't want to put the list out there just in case I miss someone. Uh, but if you can reach out to our sales team, we'll be happy to work with you, um, provide that list or who those partners might be. Um, and then again, based on a little bit more information we gather, which ones we would recommend. Um, I can't say that we have a favorite. They're all great. 
um, and each one has their own um, pros and cons. So again, it really depends on, on what the use case is, what you're trying to achieve. Um, and then we would pull in each or more, several of those partners that can work with you. We have a couple more questions here. The next one is, will this work in cold environments because we work in freezers? Yes, freezer sections. It's great because the M400, it actually has an internal ambient temperature um, that keeps it nice and warm. So as the users go in the freezer, it will continue to operate just fine. Um, we don't recommend storing or charging the glasses or the batteries inside the freezer, obviously, uh, but operating within a freezer area is not an issue. Um, we work in warm temperatures as well. We know that a lot of these distribution centers are located in warm areas of the country. Um, and especially in the summertime. So operating in lower temperatures as well as warmer temperatures is not a problem for our hardware. Uh, we do have specifics. If you're looking for operating temperatures or um, storage temperatures of our devices, that's available on our website on the spec sheets. Uh, next question, can we customize and develop features and workflows on our own, or do we need to work with your developers? No, that's a great question. Um, so a lot of these software platforms, they do allow some sort of customization. Um, if it's workflows themselves, a lot of these software solutions, they have a, a creator platform or a creator tool that allows you to create these workflows. And basically the picking is a workflow scan the barcode, display this information, take action item. Um, so it, it really is a, a very um, advanced workflow, but it's still a workflow. Um, and all of those creator tools are available on a lot of these different platforms. Also, sorry, Mike, um, you can also work with the software provider and they'll be happy to create these custom solutions for you. So it can go either way. Okay, and with that, um, there were a, a couple other questions that came in. So we, we'll reach out to those folks individually um, with answers to those questions as it's uh, half an hour is up here. So with that, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us for the webinar today. As a reminder, it was recorded and we will have it up on our website shortly. So if you'd like to view it again or pass it along to any team members that you have, Feel free. And uh, with that, everyone have a great day and thank you again. Thanks everyone.